partners here on set. Because three weeks ago, we started a series called The Blood of Jesus Christ. And this is one of the most powerful weapons any believer could have. And most of us do not know we even have this weapon. But to break it down for us, it's just again right here in studio. But before we get to that, what are you karibishe ni chaindo sijaleta unisamewa. <laughs> All right. So welcome, thank Pastor Ken. We thank really, so we're really honored by your presence today. Yes, thank you. All yeah, right. Yes. Maybe you can just introduce yourself. Who is uh, Pastor Ken? Those that are watching you today, who is Pastor uh, Ken, and where do you minister? Yeah. Uh, my name is Pastor Ken Jogu. Uh, I'm married with one wife, and to be to be specific. She is a woman. <laughs> and very blessed. important. Yes. And we are blessed with mm. one son. Mm. She is actually turning two in, in a month. And uh, I minister at Life Church International Imuru under Pastor Tim Wangi. All oh, right, that yes. is a spiritual father. Yes. I just had to slide that right to the. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, speaking of you being a pastor, of course, there's a moment that you joined ministry. Yes. When yes. was this? You know, I get curious to. to I just want to know. Uli, uli pata jele call. Ukambo, sisa we wendo pastor. Ukasema, you know what? Let me just go and be a pastor because I've received the call. Ni meitua, mm -hmm. ni meitika. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think I have a specific time mm. that I would say this is the very specific time because I have grown up in a pastor's house. You're so, a picky. Yes. So growing I up, I never in a, imagined that. <laughs> <laughs> so growing up in a pastor's house, when when we are when you're growing up and seeing the kind of things that your father go through, that your parents are going through as pastors, uh, you don't desire to become a pastor. So as I was growing up, there was nothing in me that one day I'll ever become a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Not only that, mm. especially the place of, there, there is the place of, I am a kind of a person that don't really like interacting with people. Mm. I am a lone person. So the place of interacting with people for me was something that I really didn't really like. So I was looking at the place of you <laughs> go to church, you interact with people, you are a pastor, you have to say hi to everyone. <laughs> so that, that was, that that was, was, a, that note, was that a was a no for me. <laughs> but I remember mm. after finishing high school, yeah. I remember uh, I left home, I left home my, my my home is in a place in mm. yahururu mm. i left home and came to nairobi and coming to nairobi i engaged in this particular church and while in that church i started i started a prayer movement in that particular church mm. we used to pray together with some guys and during that particular time now it's when the lord started kind of directing me to ministry <laughs> but still i still <laughs> didn't want <laughs> yes i still didn't want mm. to turn mm. to to say that i have been called to become a pastor mm -hmm. so so many people identified with me from a place of a person that prays mm -hmm. so they knew that ken is that prayer leader who will lead prayers and we shall be blessed but in 2013 i was given this story yesterday i remember in 2013 <laughs> yeah. things got worse in my life i left the job that i was in and i didn't have a place to stay so i went to stay in church for five months i spent my life in church mm -hmm. for five good months the only thing that i was doing in church is praying 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 so i remember the last month mm -hmm. the last month it was in august i remember that month god started training me on preaching and uh, i was preaching to sit and i i am holding a, a microphone preaching mm -hmm. to the seats. I like that process. So for a whole like three weeks, mm. I was preaching to seats. Then uh, on the last week, someone called me and told me we have a crusade and we would like you to come and preach. Wow. And that's how my ministry changed because after preaching that one crusade, I started receiving other invitations and oh. that's how I found myself preaching. Ah. And you know, most of us tuna hepanga process. But the process defeated. Unatoka home, ah, hapa home, the environment is no city, kitunataka kupasu in life. But you end up praying in church with fellow people just praying in church. Unajulikana kama ule msewa maombi. Yes. Ukatoka enze prayer leader from that preaching to seats, empty seats. Yes. And ukaitua 
to a crusade and just like that you yeah. bloomed yeah. and right now it's a different different stories yes and, yes. and you even you, you even have ministry right yes called yes. twim yes. twim right yes yes, yes. tell yes. us more about twim uh twim is actually a prayer movement mm -hmm. it is it is it inclines more on the on the on prayers mm -hmm. our assignment our major assignment is to cry to the lord for revival because we believe that in these coming days there is a revival that is about to hit not only our land mm -hmm. but also east africa and the entire world mm -hmm. so our desire is to to pray until we see the birth of that particular revival. Yes. Yes. Speaking of revival. Yes. Also part of revival is the blood of Jesus. And yes. we've been doing the blood of Jesus. Yes. For the past like three weeks. Yes. I don't know what God is speaking to you, but for me, when I was doing my research just to come to minister to people on JC Circle, that is friends of, of JC Circle, mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus, it had two parts. Mm -hmm. Salvation. Mm -hmm that is redemption mm -hmm. and a weapon as a believer, yes. which most of us do not know that we have that. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I don't know how the Spirit has been leading you. Uh, mm. When you read the book of Hebrews mm. 9, from verses 10 to around 14, the Bible speaks of the blood being one of the things that causes, causes purification to mm. our conscience. And one of the things we, we have, we have a, a, something that we need to understand as believers. If the enemy wants to capture your life, he starts with your mind. Because as a man thinketh, so is he. And if he starts with your, if that is the battlefield of the enemy, that battlefield, there is something that we have been given that we can use to win that particular battle. Mm -hmm. That the enemy cannot get hold of our minds and our minds can be sanctified even to be able to live for God. Because the Bible says it, after the purification of our conscience, there is an empowerment for us to be able to live a godly life. Mm -hmm. So if, 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 you have not an, if you don't have an understanding that the blood of Jesus is able to purify your conscience, one of the things that you, you will continue living a life, seeing some cycles in you, uh, wondering why is it I am born again and still I am still doing some things that are not godly. But if you can engage the blood of Jesus and ask the Lord through the blood, cleanse my conscience, you can start to see a change in your life and start to see yourself living even a pure life. Mm. Yes. You know, guys are watching and wondering, so say blood of Jesus in our conscious, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in our charge of mind, in our layman's language. You know, friends of JC, you are watching and say, how does that work? Uh, you see, you see that we we have three dimensions of the blood. Mm. We, there is there is a place. There is one thing that we call the covering of the blood. Yes. There is a place we call the smearing of the blood, mm. and there is a place we call it's like pouring it out. Now, mm. this is what used to happen: mm. the blood used the the blood of the blood of bulls. When you go back to the Old Testament, what used to happen: the the blood used to be smeared on the horns of the altar. Uh, when, when the blood is smeared on the horns of the altar, if you have sinned, you could run to the horns of the altar. When you take hold of the horns of the altar, no one will come mm. to, to, uh, to punish you because you are taking hold of those horns of the altar. Mm -hmm. Now, the blood it also covers our sins. You understand yeah, that? Yes. The blood also covers our sins. Now, there is a dimension when we talk about the blood that speaks. Because you hear the Bible speaking that the blood of Jesus speaketh better things, not like the blood of Abel. Mm -hmm. The blood that speaks is the blood that Jesus ascended with in the throne of grace and it was poured at the mercy seat. So any time a believer... Uh, there, there are times we use like pleading the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. that? Yes, yes. I plead the blood of Jesus upon my mind. That particular pleading is what cleanses our conscience. Mm -hmm. You understand? Jesus. It, it's, it's as, as simple as, as that. that. Yes. Just pleading for it. Yes. Then it comes and 
purifies you. Yes, but that now there is yes. a place of faith. Yes. You know, we, we, we have believers that speak. You, you know, you can say something that you don't actually mean. Mm -hmm. So there is a place of believing that this blood has the power to cleanse my conscience. So when you read, when you believe what the scripture says and say, Lord, I believe what your word says, mm -hmm. that, your, th that the blood is able to cleanse my conscience. So I plead the blood, let it cleanse my mind. Uh, yes. I'm taking notes. <laughs> I'm taking notes, but that is really another revelation. Yes. It's just saying, you can say mm -hmm. and never believe, yes. believe it, yes. but if you say to the revelation, yes. there's an impact you can actually see change in your life. Yes. And this has worked for me, Pastor Ken, by yes. the way. Yes. Yes. yes, The moment I began just inter interacting with the word of God and the blood of Jesus, in particular, mm -hmm. I could see massive change in my life, mm -hmm. including that renewing of the mind. Mm -hmm. Because you pray that the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit renews your mind eh, mm -hmm. by the power of the blood of Jesus. You could see massive change. You can see massive. So there's they say and saying with revelation. Yes. And that yes. brings change. Yes. And saying it with faith. Yes. Now, as a believer, mm -hmm. how do I benefit from this blood of Jesus? Not even a believer, mm -hmm. a person who is not born again. How a does the blood of Jesus come in? For them? <laughs> yeah. A person that is not born again, mm. he, the, you know, one thing, uh, mm. the blood of Jesus is effective when you are in a relationship with the Father. Uh -huh. So if you're not a, in a relationship with him, mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus might not be effective in your life. So it is the place now where we who are, believe, them that are not born again, when they cross from the place of sin and cross to this other side and they become believers, that's when the, the power that is in the blood will mm -hmm. be able to help them. Mm -hmm. yes. So they, they just need to cross. <laughs> <laughs> they just they need, need to, to cross, cross over. To they just, yes, they just need to cross over. Because right. the many benefits that are there, mm -hmm. they are, the, I, I believe you've said that you talked about the blood being one of the, the, the things that helped us to be redeemed. Mm -hmm. And the, the word redemption being, being, means being bought. Yes. So we were bought from slavery and been bought from the slavery of sin, and we came to the kingdom that is of God. Mm -hmm. So it is the blood that will bring them from the slavery and bring us to the kingdom. <laughs> blood itamsaidia. Now, you know, we have other people that are not born again, and they are saying, how will we, how will we be able to live? the things that we have been doing. Because unangalia life yako unaona manze zile vitu nimekuwa nikifanya. Siezi come out, but God akikuita, mm. ame provide kila kitu yenye unaitaji for you to be able to be sustained in salvation. And one of those things is the blood. Mm -hmm. Yes. Na kuregisha nyuma tena. Yes. Nisha okoka, nisha crossover. Yes. Do you blood of Jesus? Yes. Na benefitaje kama believer. <laughs> eh. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I know it's a weapon, right? Yes, yeah, it's a There's so many things. The, the blood of Jesus has so many, many yes, things. Yes, yes. Being, it being a weapon for a believer. Yes. What other things is the uh, blood of Jesus is to a believer? Now, mm. uh, number one thing that I have said, it mm. is, it, 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 it's what purifies our conscience. Yes. Number two, as you're saying, it's a weapon. Mm -hmm. But you see, as a weapon, we need to break it down. Yes. And understand what does the blood actually do in our lives. Because yeah. number one, uh, not only pleading the blood that it will be able to cleanse your conscience, you can also plead the blood. A story is told yes. of a person that each and every night they used to pray. And in their prayer, they could cover themselves with the blood and cover their homestead with the blood. Mm. So one particular night, one particular night, mm. they never prayed. They missed the time of prayer and they all went to sleep. Uh -huh. That particular night, there, were, there was a gang of thieves that was planning an attack to this particular family. But every day when they came, they saw fire surrounding that family. Uh -huh. Every night when they came, they saw fire surrounding the family. But on this particular day, mm -hmm. when they missed to pray, they found there is no fire and it, is, it, it looks like there is no hedge, so they were able to enter. And they robbed the house. So in the morning when the, when the family woke up, the man was reminded, you never pray. prayed yesterday. Wow. So the blood is able to create a hedge 
around you and protect you. It can protect you from accidents. It can protect you from losing stuff. It can protect you even from meeting evil friends. That is, that is, you can protect from evil friends. Wale mna share shule shule leo, wale sewa prima, wale sewa junior high. Tulisa mani gani ni kiste preze junior high ama sine? Ama CBC. Na wale wale sewa... <laughs> now they were our high school generally shule the blood of jesus can protect you from any evil friends from yes. all evil friends yes. and keep you safe yeah right yes. Yes. okay first take you be you'll be be ministering to us during inspiration by but final words final comments on the blood of jesus christ uh final comments yes. maybe i'll say mm. what else the blood can do yes uh, in the place where the blood speaks, it, the Bible speaks that the blood speaks better things yes. than the blood of Abel. Upon Dona Julisa, the blood of Abel was speaking. <laughs> yes, the blood of Abel yeah. actually speaks. Mm -hmm. The blood of animals speaks. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, believers need to understand. Any time they ask that the blood speaks over their lives, the blood that is speaking is this blood is what introduces us to a covenant that we have entered into with God. So any time you, you, you say, let the blood speak over my life, whatever you're provoking to happen in your life, it's that every promise that has been laid in the covenant every promise now starts to be laid out upon your life. Mm -hmm. So for example, in the covenant that we have been brought in, mm -hmm. there is healing uh -huh. that has been provided, that Jesus Christ was took 39 strokes because of our healing. But now, some of us are not experiencing the healing. But when you announce, let the blood speak over my life, that particular promise is in the covenant. Ah. So now, when the blood is speaking, it is speaks of healing over your life. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, another thing, prosperity is in that particular covenant. Ah. So when you say, let the blood speak over my life, you are, you are telling, let prosperity happen in my life. So maybe my, my, my last <laughs> words would be, go study the promises of God. And as you study the promises, yes. get now to tell the Lord, get to announce, let the blood continue to speak over my life. And all those promises, you start to see them happening in your life. Aye. Come on, that is very deep and very simple. Yes. If you understand it, guys, when you na job just shika vitu nini sana, but the interview nenda kui post on our YouTube channel, so you can get, you can just head over to our Y254 YouTube channel. Na mpate yote is some yote about the word, and also guys would like to reach you, interact with you, know you more, even join your ministry to him. Where's to him? Tim, we are, on, uh, our, our yeah, offices yeah. are in Thika. Yes. Yes, that's, mm. where, that's where we are in. Mm. Yes, but we are online. We do morning devotions each and every day. And we do, we do night prayers yes. Tuesday yeah. and Wednesday. So if, if you would love to join us, you can join us each and every morning. We post our, the link that we use on Google Meet yeah. each and every, mm. uh, every Sunday we post it on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Our Facebook page is The Way International Ministries. Mm. When you type that, you will find it. You can find me at Ken Njogu on Facebook and Ken Njogu on Instagram. on Instagram. And also Ken Njogu, Pastor Ken Njogu on YouTube. On YouTube. Yes. Oh, Twitter and TikTok, no, just join back. Uh, uh, <laughs> on, on, on Twitter, I am also Pastor Ken Njogu. All right. Yes. Yes. TikTok, <laughs> that's for another day. I am in TikTok, but don't follow me on TikTok. Hakuna <laughs> context. <laughs> <laughs> but we are really honored by your presence and making time to join us yes, here. Yes. You're going to share a word. Yes. Uh, but before that, Mr. President, yes. to lead us with our, with our worship. Oh. <laughs>